Yes, prize Overwatch is my game of the year. It's also literally everybody else's game of the year. What would you have me pick? Mirror's Edge? I feel like I have to disclose that this is my game of the year. It doesn't have to be your game of the year. Your game of the year could be totally different, and that's totally fine. I should also disclose that I honestly haven't played many games this year. These are the ones that I can remember. So I'm only really picking from the games that I had a strong interest in playing. And I'm just one guy. I had a lot of shit going on. I can't play everything, all right? The main argument against Overwatch being game of the year is that it's too simple. It's just a multiplayer only game with barely any game modes. There's only two real objectives, capture the point or escort the payload. But here's the thing. The game can be super complex. It's easy to learn in that it's simple on the surface level, but it's hard to master. I like to think that it's similar to Super Smash Bros. in that the core goals are really simple, but there's a million different characters that all play vastly differently. In Overwatch, you have to use every character's unique skill set and choose your character based on what's going on in the game. I find myself using Bastion if I'm moving a payload or defending certain maps. Otherwise, I'll stick to McCree or Hanzo, depending on whether or not my team needs more attack or defense characters. And sometimes Tracer if I'm feeling particularly nimble. Do you understand how insanely hard it is to balance a game like this? How do you make sure that a character like Tracer even has a chance against a character like Roadhog? It's this fine tuning, this attention to detail that puts Overwatch in that number one spot for me. Lately, every games publisher is trying to fart out some games that become your multiplayer game that you sink hundreds of hours into, but none of them put this much focus into developing the multiplayer. Why is it that Call of Duty is still trying to fart out these single player campaigns that are just a series of shooting galleries? At least Titanfall has some unique level design going on. Then you have games like The Division. Pretty much a multiplayer only game with some of the worst team balancing I have ever seen in my life. Why in God's name would I want every bad guy to be the level of the highest person on my team every mission that we pick? And if that guy levels up in the middle of the mission, so do all of the bad guys. And I'm just sitting here doing zero DPS to everybody. This is balancing gone wrong in its simplest form. How could nobody catch this in QA? At least this is how it was when the game came out, because I just completely abandoned it after that. Overwatch is stripped of all of the garbage that bloats up a typical AAA shooter. I keep hearing about Call of Duty Zombies. I played it maybe once back in Black Ops, but that was it. I don't need that. Whatever time you put into that, why don't you put it into the single player so that my game doesn't f***ing drop connection and kick me off on the single player. Counter-Strike is one of the most popular multiplayer shooters in the world. Most people only play on the same few maps with the same few weapons on the same one game mode. It's simple, but it works so well. I'd argue that there's more to Overwatch, not to mention the charm. The art direction is top-notch. It's super good stuff. In fact, I have a whole video series on the art of video games, and the first two episodes are on character designs in Overwatch. You should watch that because I'm super into this stuff. I also love how the story is really sparse and available for the whole world to see online for free. It helps get people interested in the game. It's amazing what you can do with just a short seven minute animated short. They're all so beautiful and emotional like tiny little Pixar movies. And they give us just the right amount of story too. You don't even need a story. All these different characters fighting all willy-nilly on separate teams isn't going to make sense no matter how you spin it. These shorts are just an added bonus. When it comes down to it, the only thing that matters are game mechanics and is the game fun? And the answer is obviously yes. It's the most fun when you play with friends. If you're just starting this game, start with Soldier 76 because he plays the most like a typical shooter. But please branch out to other characters you're eventually going to need some variety to help out your team. This is a team-based game and the whole team 
needs to be balanced accordingly. You don't get kills, you get eliminations. And assisted eliminations count as regular eliminations. So if you're one of those guys that runs around Call of Duty and gets assists every five seconds, you will just get eliminations in Overwatch. It'll just count for a whole elimination. This encourages team play, and not to mention boosts your ego a lot. Everybody who plays Overwatch for the first time is always like, wow, I'm so good, I'm getting so many kills. No, you're not. It just feels like you're getting more kills than any other game because assists count. But, you know, at least you're having fun. Overall, Blizzard did an amazing job redefining the team-based shooter genre. Taking very core ideas, redefining them over and over, and sticking to their guns. This game is a multiplayer shooter with beautiful animations. That's it. That's all you get. Take it or leave it. For me, it wins because it does one thing really, really good. Every character's different game mechanics control so well. They're all so good. And the game forces you to juggle between a few of them, varying the gameplay every time. And it's on sale right now pretty much anywhere you can get your hands on it. So there's really no reason not to try it. Or maybe just hold out and they'll do another free weekend where you can download the game and play the whole freaking thing for free over the weekend because Blizzard is awesome. I would like to give an honorable mention to Hyperlight Drifter, another one of my favorite games of the year. It can't quite live up to Overwatch because that's kind of an unfair fight. If you haven't checked out Hyperlight Drifter, you absolutely have to. You can get it on Windows, Mac, Linux, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, friggin' Ouya if you're an asshole. It's kind of a throwback to Zelda, but with game mechanics that just feel really good and satisfying. Not to mention, it's one of the most beautiful games of the year. I just had to mention Hyperlight Drifter. So what do you guys think about Overwatch being game of the year for me and game of the year for a lot of other people? Leave it in the comments below. I'm on Twitter. All of those social media garbage. What is your game of the year? Maybe I should do disappointments because there were a lot, I had a lot of disappointments this year. Of course, new videos every single Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Wednesday nights is Wolf Den Live. Join us for the live podcast. We hang out with you, and it's fun every single time. And Mondays on the ShoddyCast channel, there's the art. Don't forget about that. And the most important things that you can do is subscribe and share this with a friend who loves Overwatch, like me. And we can play together. How about that? And thank you guys very much. Hope you had a good holiday, have a good new year, and always have a good week.